Hi everyone, my name is Mo Bean, and today we're going to go over nonlinear equations in one variable. What are nonlinear equations in one variable? Well, nonlinear equations are any equations that have been raised to a power higher than 1. Here are some examples. The first equation we see here is an example of a quadratic equation. Quadratic equations are a second degree polynomial. This means that their leading term is raised to power of 2. Since their leading term is raised to power of 2, they're automatically considered nonlinear equations. In the middle equation, we can see that the x is raised to power of 3. This is called a cubic. This is also a nonlinear equation because it's raised to a power higher than 1. In the third equation, we can see that x is raised to the power of 6. Can you guys tell me what we can identify that as? You got it! It's another example of a nonlinear equation. Outside of these examples, we have other nonlinear equations like rational equations, exponential equations, and logarithmic equations. If we were to graph each one of these types of equations, we'll see that none of them will give you a line, hence the name nonlinear equations. Speaking of graphs, let's go ahead and look at some. So here are some examples of nonlinear equations graphed. Notice how they bend and turn, um, making them again nonlinear. We can learn a lot from a graph based on the equation alone. Out of the three graphs, do any of them look similar? The first graph on the left and the last graph on the right both look like a U tracing upwards. That's no accident. If we look at the equations for both of those graphs, we can see that the leading term's exponent is a even number. That makes it so you get the parabola shape, which again looks like a U. Whenever the highest exponent is odd, that's when we get the odd shape you can see in the middle, where one line goes up and the other one curves down. If the leading coefficient has a negative value, then the graph is actually flipped. So for example, if we had negative x to the 6, the graph for that would no longer be a u that's facing upwards, it would be a u that's facing downwards. So it's like a smile turned upside down. <laughs> Let's look at an example of solving a common question about a quadratic equation. There are different ways to solve these types of questions. The goal in today's problem is to get the x by itself so that we can see where it crosses the x-axis. One way to get x by itself is using the box method. It's important to know that the box method only works with equations that are in the same form you see here. The first thing we do in the box method is create a box with four cells or four smaller boxes on the inside. We then write the first term for our, um, our equation in the top left box and the last term in the bottom right box. The signs are important, so as my high school teacher always said, watch your signs. We then multiply the first term in the top left box with the term in the bottom right box and we get negative 10x squared. Our goal now is to find two numbers that multiply to negative 10x squared and combine to negative 3x. We can do this by first listing out all the factors of negative 10x squared. Once we finish listing out all the factors, we can start combining them to see which one of them add up to negative 3x, which is our middle term. We can see that 2x and negative 5x will combine to give us negative 3x. So those are the numbers we're going to put in the boxes. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. Now it's time for us to factor out the common terms across rows and across the columns. Let's start with the first row. We can see that x squared and 2x only have 1x in common. So that's their greatest common factor. We can factor that out and put it on the outside of the box on that same row. Let's do it again, but this time for the first column. x squared 
and negative 5x only have an x in common, so we can only factor that out. We can keep doing this for the remaining rows and columns to figure out the rest, but there's another way I want to talk about. Another way to find out what the remaining terms are would be to use the factored out terms. Let me show you what I mean. Notice out there how the two factored out terms so far are x and x. If we multiply them together, we get x squared. Notice how that's the same thing in the top left box. So this makes it that instead of us having to factor out the greatest common factor in the second column, we can actually just ask ourselves what times x will give us 2x? Well, that's just 2. So we can write that on the top box of the second column. There's only one left term for us to figure out. What times x will give you negative 5x? Well, that's just negative 5. We can double check our work by multiplying the terms we factored out with their corresponding lineup. So in the first box, x times x is x squared. Then we have x times 2, which is 2x. We then have negative 5 times x, which is negative 5x. And finally, negative 5 times 2, which is negative 10. We can now write out our factor terms like this. To find out what our x values are, we need to find out what x values would make this equation true. If we say x is negative 2, then the expression on the left would become negative 2 plus 2 equals 0. And on the right, the expression would become negative 2 minus 5 equals negative 7. So, now we have 0 times negative 7, which gives us 0. So one of our answers is if x is equal to negative 2. That means the graph will cross the x-axis at negative 2. But wait, what if the expression on the right were to equal 0? Let's see, we can set x equal to 5 and solve it again. We can see that this also equals to 0. So there are two solutions. This is just one example of a nonlinear equation in one variable. There are many different variations out there with their own unique ways to solve. For more practice problems like the ones in this video and access to a 24-7 online practice tool, check out ACIT at the link below. ACIT is the ultimate study tool for the SATs and ACTs created by Juni Learning, an award-winning educational tech company that has helped thousands of students take their learning to the next level. Get a one-week free trial when you use the link in the description. Until next time, bye!